Amen. This morning, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Jonah. I'm in chapter 4 of the book of Jonah. We have been studying about Jonah and his life. And I believe what we have seen in the first four chapters uh, of the book of Jonah is how God is working in the heart of Jonah. And I believe today that God wants to work in our heart as well. And in Jonah's heart, there was a lot of different issues that Jonah was dealing with. And one was he simply did not want to go and tell the message uh, that God wanted him to tell to a certain group of people. And God says, Jonah, I need you to do this. What we find, though, is that Jonah had developed some bitterness and had basically an idea in his head that he said, I I just don't want to minister to those people. But again, we see that God's love is for everyone and that God had a job for Jonah to do. So as we look, first of all, at the first four verses, then I'll come back uh, to the other verses. But look at the first four verses of Jonah chapter 4. It says, Jonah was greatly displeased and became furious. He prayed to the Lord, please, Lord, isn't this what I thought while I was still in my own country? That's why I fled toward Tarshish in the first place. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and one who relents from sending disaster. And now, Lord, take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. The Lord asked, is it right for you to be angry? As we look at this, these first four verses, we see where Jonah is ple- is crying out to God, that God, I, I, basically, I told you that this was going to happen. For those of you that maybe don't remember the entire story, God had called Jonah to go to the people, to the the Ninevites, and to share the gospel with them. And he didn't want to do it. He had a hatred for them. He just did not, he had, he despised them. But he just didn't want to go and share the gospel. I say the gospel, the news that God wanted to, to share. But the question is, do we have that right to refuse to do what God has called us to do? If God tells us, and we say that we are a follower of God, do we have that right to tell God no? And Jonah, in his own life, had either hatred or despised these people. And God was saying, Jonah, this is what I want you to do. And finally, as we know, in chapter 3, Jonah went to Nineveh. He told him that destruction was coming. And the only way for the destruction not to come would be to repent and turn their lives over to God. Well, the people did that. And now God is not going to punish them at this moment because they did what God wanted them to do. They repented. They saw the need and realized that what they were doing was wrong. And what did Jonah do? If you look at that passage of Scripture, he became furious. He was mad. It was like, God, I knew you were going to give in. I, I, I knew it. But look what, as he goes on to that, and he, he said, I know that you are gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and one who relents from sending disaster. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Scotty, I agree with you. All of those things that I just read that in verses 2 and 3 are things that God does well. These are things that we should be grateful for. And and if we're honest with ourselves, as we look around today in our own life, aren't you glad that God is gracious and compassionate and slow to anger and faithful and one who relents from sending disaster? I don't know about you, but I am. I'm thankful that he has those qualities, that he does those things. But Jonah, because of the bitterness in his heart towards those people was furious. It's almost like today, (laughs) I'm trying to think how to say it. 
you might have people that you don't care for. And when something good happens to those people you don't care for, sometimes you get upset. Because you think, well, but, but they're not, in your mind, they're not good people, but something good has happened. This is where we have to sometimes stop and look and look at the position that we're in. God was looking at a lost city. Scripture says over like 100,000 people. He sent his word to them, his messenger to them to repent, and that's what they did. God knew, I believe, that Jonah was having some issues inside of his life, and God was trying to get Jonah to understand that, that God's will, God's purpose, God's message, God reaching out to people, well, that's a God thing. And because of that, Jonah needed to accept that. But, oh, Jonah was having a hard time. You might say Jonah's disposition was not where it needed to be. In other words, he, he was in this where he was just in this, you know, some people would say today, he was in this funky mood. And he became bitter towards these people. And so we, we find there in verse 3, he basically said, Lord, then take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. It's right. And then the Lord asked him, is it right for you to be angry? What was God doing? God wasn't doing anything different. He has done it all throughout the Old Testament of letting people know of their sin and the need to repent. But we find that Jonah had got to the point that because of his bitterness, he couldn't see clearly. Because of his anger, he couldn't see clearly. And I wonder in our world today, are there times where our bitterness, even though it shouldn't be there, but it's there, our anger towards someone, some group, it stands in our way of seeing clearly about the message of Jesus Christ, the message, the gospel, the message that God has for people today. And this is what Jonah was fighting. He said, well, if this is what's going to happen, then take me out. And Jonah was missing it. God was trying to use Jonah in a mighty way, but because of Jonah's own personal reasonings and his personal thoughts in his own life, he couldn't see the mighty hand of God. We need to realize about the mighty hand of God. And, and, and sometimes it, it, our own hearts, we said, man, am I missing what God is trying to do here because of this and because of that? And many times we are. God is, is, is reaching out, extending his hand of kindness to lead people into repentance from their sins. And we should never stand in the way of that. And if we have some personal problems, then we need to say, God, help me with that. Because your will of reaching all the people of this world is the most important thing. But you know, sometimes... We're human, right? We have struggles in our life. Struggles to love like God would love. And, and, and sometimes that's, that's a very real thing in life. We struggle to love like God because maybe we've been hurt. Maybe because of this situation or that situation. But we need to see the need to love. And God was trying to show Jonah that. And, but sometimes we struggle. But look what Jonah did. Look at the same chapter, chapter 4. Go down to verse 5. Jonah left the city, found a place east of it. He made himself a shelter there and sat in its shade to see what would happen to the city. Then, then the Lord God appointed a plant... And it grew over Jonah to provide shade for his head to rescue him from his trouble. Jonah was greatly pleased with the plant. And when, when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm 
that attacked the plant, and it withered. As the sun was rising, God appointed a scorching east wind. The sun beat down on Jonah's head so much that he almost fainted, and he wanted to die than to live. Then God asked Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Yes, it is, he replied. I'm angry enough to die. So the Lord said, you care about the plant which you did not labor over and did not grow. It appeared in a night and perished in a night. But may I, but may I not care about the great city of Nineveh? which has more than 120,000 people who cannot distinguish between their right and their left, as well as many animals. Here again, Jonah was very upset. He said, God, what are you doing? First of all, we see that Jonah went to the east. Jonah was still hoping. Jonah was still thinking, man, I'm going to get a good seat because maybe God will change his mind. Or maybe they'll, th- those people will do something and mess things up and I'll get to see God wipe them out. And so he was sitting there in anticipation, hoping that they would get wiped out. And it even says that God provided this plant to give him some shade. But when the plant went away the next day, it was taken out. Jonah was upset. God, you took my plan away. You know, and sometimes we, almost that petty, you know, in the sense of the plant. Did, Jonah didn't even plant that plant. It was God who provided that. And, and I like what the scripture says, because if you go through the book of Jonah, there, several times it says God appointed, he appointed the great fish. He appointed the plant to, to grow. God provided these things and, 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 and had them there. And, and we forget that God also provided Jonah to go and to share with the people of Nineveh about God's message to repent and to return to God but he was more upset about the plant dying. Because now what? The sun was on him. You see, God is trying to continue to educate Jonah. Jonah, you're not getting it. Jonah, the, 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 the primary emphasis is not the plant. It's not the worm. It's not the sun. It's people dying because they do not know God. And we need to see today, our world, is it messed up? Sure it is. It's messed up from top to bottom. But still, the, the, the driving theme is that we need to take the time to share Jesus with the people around us. You know, Jonah needed to be thankful in the sense that God called him. And even when Jonah was messing up and going in the wrong way, God sent that storm and it was to correct to help Jonah get on the right path and and all these things God was doing for Jonah and Jonah couldn't see it and Jonah was forgetting about God's grace and God's mercy and I pray that we would never forget about God's grace and God's mercy and and I know it we say well preacher you know God's done a lot of good things for me and yes he has But we need to remember God is doing a lot more that sometimes we don't even acknowledge what God has done. And I think today in our world, you know, we have had some wonderful videos to remind us about the shoeboxes and reaching children that we will never see ourselves. But it's having compassion for them. But we need to have compassion for the people of our own city, for our for our own area here. There are people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. People who are dying and going to hell. We need to have compassion for them. We need to share God's grace. But, well, my, the air in my tire has gone out, so I, I can't share today. We, we need to realize the importance of, of putting God first and sharing with the people around us. But you know, I believe all throughout this book, what God is doing is that he's trying to discipline Jonah. He's trying to show Jonah, Jonah, you're missing what truly is important. And that is 
Jesus. That is what God can do. You know, we have opportunities. Parents, you have opportunities. When your children start asking questions about Jesus and being baptized, you've got a responsibility to help them come to that understanding and, and to realize what that is. We, we need to be careful that we don't put that off. Here we need to see the, the importance, again, that God had appointed things and brought things in, into perspective, but Jonah was just thinking of himself. Bitterness. If we become bitter, and a lot of times I've had people explode in my face saying, I'm not bitter. I said, okay. <laughs> Let's just put anger down then, you know. It's a, uh, but when we let bitterness and anger come up, we say, well, there's a reason. I said, well, okay, let's deal with that. Because God's love can deal with that bitterness and that anger and, and all of those things. We need to see this morning, and I do sometimes, you know, our, my attitude, your attitude, you know, for God to just help us to keep our heart fixed on the truth, His truth. Our world today is trying to get us to, to move to this side and that side and just say, well, whatever happens is okay. But we need to stay focused on the truth that God has provided for us in his word. And we should always, always have a compassion for the lost. And do what we can to share the news. Jonah should have been on that side of the mountain rejoicing that those people repented. But instead, he just want to curl up in his little ball, stick his head in the ground, and say it's over. Guys, every time a child accepts, every time a teenager accepts, every time an adult accepts, there should be rejoicing for one more added to the kingdom of God. This morning, Jonah could not see that God was trying to help him and work with him, and he missed the blessing. Guys, let's don't miss the blessing of reaching one more for him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for how you have provided and how you are there for us. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that we would see what you are doing, what you have done, what you have continued to do. And Lord, may we just don't get to the point that we're so focused on us that we forget the needs that you've laid out before us. Lord, I just thank you and just ask that you would speak to us. We ask this in your son's name.